In a weak division like women's featherweight, there's increased focus around any fighter with an above average talent level, and no fighter was a bigger victim than former Invicta champion Megan Anderson. In 2017, Anderson joined the UFC with hopes of her kickstarting the company's weight class, only for a run of underwhelming performances to further accelerate its demise. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Megan Anderson in the UFC. For Gold Coast native Megan Anderson, the struggle to reach the UFC was harder than most. Anderson had endured a troubled young adulthood. Originally training to join the Australian Army, Anderson was discharged after reportedly trying to take her life in a failed suicide attempt. After several years battling her mental health, Anderson briefly worked as a receptionist before being encouraged to take up MMA, fighting five times on the regional scene before signing on for the all-female promotion Invicta. After a rough start, Anderson began making inroads on the Invicta midcard, winning admirers for her good looks, knockout power, and 6 foot 1 frame, making her one of the tallest female fighters in the sports history. Anderson's career reached its high point in 2017, when victory over Charmaine Tweet saw her win the Invicta featherweight title, becoming the division's second champion after MMA legend Chris Cyborg. With Cyborg now fighting in the UFC, rumors of a match between herself and Anderson soon began to circulate, with the Australian doing her part to fan the flames in a series of post-fight interviews. It's, it's not like it's a segue for me into a different division. Like, this is my division. And um, I feel like Asia's on my side and, and I'm the only one that has the skills and the ability to beat her. Anderson seemingly got her wish that June when Jermaine Durandamy chose to vacate her women's featherweight title rather than accept a match with Cyborg. In the days after, Anderson was signed to a six-fight contract with the UFC, in a match between herself and the Brazilian set for UFC 214. The fight, however, never took place, as Anderson was forced to withdraw two weeks before the show due to complications relating to her work visa. Tanya Evinger would be Cyborg's sacrificial lamb for the event, while Anderson would spend the next 11 months attempting to resolve her legal issues. By the time Anderson was ready to return, interest in a Cyborg match had waned, but the Australian received a decent alternative in a main card bout with Holly Holm at UFC 225. Anderson started strong by swarming Holly early in the fight, before the preacher's daughter scored a takedown to end a competitive first round. It was there Anderson's limitations became obvious, failing to mount any grappling defense against her undersized opponent, herself not known for her wrestling game. Anderson was outmuscled by home for the remainder of the fight, and nearly suffered the indignity of being submitted by the former boxing champion, which would be a bit like getting knocked out by Cindy Dandois. Anderson would lose the fight by unanimous decision, and quickly realized the jump to the UFC would be much harder than she expected. Things weren't expected to get easier for Anderson when she took on MMA veteran Kat Zingano at UFC 232. With Zingano boasting an acclaimed wrestling background, fans expected another long night for the Australian. The match, however, proved short. Very, very short. Oh, oh, and all that, yeah, 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 that's, that's gonna be it. She got Fight's over. Eye. Fans and media were confused as to what caused the normally durable Zingano to stop fighting so suddenly. The replay showed Anderson used every inch of her reach advantage to claim a bizarre stoppage win. The toe went right into the eyeball. I mean, and with all the force behind Megan's leg, I mean, that, that is nasty. The fight did little to convince fans Anderson was a UFC level athlete. But it was still a win on the big stage against a former title challenger in Zingano, which is a lot more than can be said for some fighters. After matches against two former bantamweights, Anderson faced her first natural featherweight in unbeaten Canadian Felicia Spencer, who succeeded Anderson as Invicta featherweight champion seven months earlier. Most of the fight's build had centered around the extreme size difference between the two, but Spencer was adamant the discrepancy wouldn't be an issue come fight night. At least I hope that's what she's talking about. Tell me about sort of the, the game planning and the prep work that goes into fighting an opponent that's that tall, because she is a little bit unique, I, I would say, for, for a woman's fighter being <laughs> that mean, tall. I mean, six inches doesn't impress me that much. <laughs> that's what she said! <laughs> oh Despite entering the fight as a minus 200 favorite, 
Anderson was dominated by Spencer, landing just three significant strikes as Spencer used her superior grappling to claim a first round submission. With that, hopes for Anderson as a top level featherweight were effectively over, and the UFC realized they needed to think outside the box if they wished to salvage their Australian Amazon. Step forward, Zara Fairn, a former French kickboxer who hadn't competed in MMA since 2017. But it didn't stop her from being signed to the UFC to face Anderson at UFC 243. There, Anderson showed her rare grappling props to claim a first round submission against the one fighter with a weaker ground game than hers, scoring a popular hometown win in the process. Fairn would suffer another first round loss to Felicia Spencer and hasn't competed in MMA since February 2020. Anderson showed further improvement next time out with a convincing win over UFC newcomer Norma Dumont. It had taken three years and questionable matchmaking, but Anderson had seemingly found her size 11 feet in the octagon. Anderson believes she... The COVID-19 global pandemic slowed Anderson's newfound momentum, but it didn't stop her being the center of considerable conflict outside the octagon. In February 2021, UFC bantamweight Casey Kenny appeared as a guest on Sean O'Malley's podcast, and in a conversation about female fighters, he was less than complimentary about the Australian. Would you smash Megan Anderson or no, Casey? Probably not, man. She's not too... Well, Be honest. I mean, if it came down to it and it was like You're 5 a.m., 4, she's a 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. or <laughs> just, just she's us all, two hanging out. She's piggybacking you to her yeah. room. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, fuck it. Anderson immediately spoke out against Kenny's comments, sparking a sport-wide debate about the sexualization of female fighters and even sexual harassment in the workplace. Kenny would later apologize to Anderson for his comments, while the UFC in their divine wisdom book the two on the same card for their next fight. Despite Cyborg having already left the UFC, the company pulled a weekend at Bernie's with her weight class and booked Anderson into a title match against Amanda Nunez at UFC 259. Fans and media were unanimous in believing Anderson was not ready for such a high profile match. A view vindicated when footage emerged of a visibly nervous Anderson entering the apex for the bout. The fight played out as expected, Nunez overwhelmed Anderson with strikes before finishing the Australian to claim a first round submission. Despite being one of the few natural featherweights on the roster, the UFC decided not to renew Anderson's contract, ending her company tenure with three wins and three losses, none of which came against the woman she was brought in to fight in the first place. Anderson spent the months after the fight away from the cage, returning to Invicta as a broadcaster and filming a Hollywood movie alongside Chris Hemsworth before announcing on social media in February of 2022, she was no longer pursuing fights in the short term. In any other weight class, Megan Anderson would be a footnote in the MMA history books, but such was the dearth of talent at women's featherweight she thrust to a position her talent couldn't sustain. A portion of the blame, however, should be directed at the UFC, whose refusal to build a weight class left Anderson fighting opponents well below her level or those she was greatly outmatched by. Much like women's featherweight, Anderson's UFC tenure should be written off as a failed experiment. You might say she was a uh, great height hope. <laughs> yeah, I'll see myself out. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never, ever, ever miss a video.